Everyone, welcome to the beauty of grace. And um, today we're going to talk about um, the peace of God. And we know that in a time that we live in today, that we need God's peace, don't we? This world is something going on in this world all the time. There's drama. There's killings. There's it's turmoil. And we need God's peace. And we have to remember, saints, that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So that's why it's good for us to continue to meditate on his word and meditate on his good news. Don't get caught up on everything that's going on in this world, because this world is not a fair world. And um, sometimes we don't see justice. And sometimes it seems like injustice prevails. But what we have to remember, this world is a fallen world. It is a condemned world. So that's why we see what we see and, and we hear what we hear. But today we're going to talk about the peace of God. And we're going to come from, well, first of all, let me just tell you about peace and exactly what peace means. Peace does mean having a peace of mind. And that's real crucial, right? Because if you have a peace of mind, then your body will be at peace. Okay? And that brings along good health. All right? But also, if we dig a little deeper into um, the Hebrew word of peace, uh, it is called shalom. And shalom means uh, not just peace of mind, but c completeness, safety, soundness, health, prosperity, and your welfare. And so uh, peace means a whole lot of things. And we have that peace on today. But I want to go into, um, under the Old Covenant, we're going to go into Leviticus and the Old Covenant. And um, the children of Israel, remember, since they were under the law at this time, uh, they had to try to earn God's peace. So if we look at Leviticus 3, the first verse, it says, When his offering is a sacrifice of a peace offering, if he offers it of the herd, whether male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. So in order for them to receive God's peace, they had to go and get an animal. And that animal had to be without blemish. And the priest would observe, observe that animal and make sure it didn't have any defects. And we know that Jesus, who's our perfect sacrifice for us, he was without blemish. His blood was pure blood. He had his father's blood, which is God's. He didn't have Mary's blood, even though she gave him birth. Okay. So he was without sin. His blood was not tainted when he was born. Now, when we were born, we were born as sinners because of the fall of Adam. Okay, so um, it, the, the sacrifice was the same under the old covenant um, that the animal was without blemish. But one thing that was also that does uh, make a difference is when they would kill the animal, the animal never suffered. It was a vein in the animal's neck where they would just slice, where they would just cut rather, and the animal would just fall out and die. Okay, but with Jesus, Jesus suffered. Uh, he went through torture. And, um, you know, with all the stripes that he took and, and all the beatings that he took and, and all, the Bible in, in Psalms says that he was unrecognizable. He didn't even look like a man. His, that's how disfigured his face was and his, and his body. So, um, you know, that's why he's our perfect sacrifice. So under the, the under the Leviticus in Leviticus uh, during this time they were law, there were laws that they um, had to do and they had to bring offerings as well and um, this peace offering is just one offering that we're talking about today but they also there were grain offerings there were burnt offerings there were sin offerings 
that they had to do as well. So we're just glad we don't have to do that today because Jesus was our perfect sacrifice and he did it once and for all. Um, so when they would bring the animal to the priest so that their sins would be covered and so they could receive the peace of God, uh, verse 2 says, And he shall lay his hand on the head of his offering and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And Aaron's son, the priest, shall sprinkle the blood all around on the altar. All right. So when the person that bought the, the offering, when he would take, he would lay his hands on the head of the animal. The animal, it was like an exchange had occurred. The animal would receive his sin. And then, and then they would receive the, the righteousness of the sacrifice. All right. So it's the same just like with Jesus. What happened was Jesus took our sin. When you ask the Lord to be your savior, an exchange occurs where he has taken your sin. He takes your sin. And then we receive his righteousness. Because on the cross, he took every sin that you'll ever do in this lifetime. And that brings me peace. That brings me peace, guys, just to know that. You know, it's not that I have to do it. It's that it's already been done. All right. So we're also going to go to Leviticus uh, chapter 26. Let's find Leviticus chapter 26. Uh, starting at verse 3. Uh, verse 3 says, If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, then I will give you rain in its season. The land shall yield its produce, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Okay? So, um, they still had the laws to do. And they had to do God's statutes and commandments. But today, this verse 3 is saying, um, if you do what I have for you to do, and you can keep these laws, then you'll receive these blessings. And we're going to go with the blessings in a few minutes. But uh, it's what they had to do. But today, uh, this verse right here, Jesus has already done this verse. He's already walked in God's statues and kept the commandments and performed them. He's already done this for us. Okay, so make sure when you read that, know that this has already been done, that you don't have to do it. And then we read about verse 4 said, because if you do this, you know, he'll bless your crops and he'll bless whatever you do. So in today's time, he'll bless your work and, and whatever the work of your hands, whatever they do. And uh, let's go to verse 5, and let's finish reading these um, uh, blessings. Your threshing, th I'm going to go to the New Living Translation on verse 5. Your threshing season will overlap with the grape harvest, and your grape harvest will overlap with the season of planting grain. You will eat your field and live securely in your own land. I will give you peace in the land. And you will be able to sleep with no cause for fear. I will rid the land of wild animals and keep your enemies out of your land. So part of peace, what I just told you earlier, means safety. So he will give you safety. Okay. He will give you that peace. Remember that the Lord is your savior and he wants to protect you. And we sure need protection in this world that we live in. Uh, verse 7 says, in fact, you would chase down your enemies and slaughter them with your swords. Five of you would chase a hundred and a hundred of you would chase 10,000. All your enemies will fall beneath your sword. And what this means for us today is that God would take care of your enemies. The new covenant tells us today to pray for our enemies. Okay. So we just pray for our enemies and, and because as long as you live, people are going to talk about you. They're going to say things that are not true about you. And um, we will go through persecution um, for being a follower of Christ. And um, so even though these things happen, um, God will take care of your enemies. All right. Because what they say, it'll go to nothing and it'll be nothing and it won't prosper. All right. So don't worry about your enemies. Verse 9 says, I will look favorably upon you. 
making you fertile and multiplying your people, and I will fulfill my covenant with you. So God will look favorably among us. He gives us favor today, blessings that we don't deserve, which is grace. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to perform for it. We don't have to try to earn it. We just have it. And, um, and also this scripture, if, if you're a married couple and you want to have a baby and you've been unable to have a baby, this is a scripture for you. Say he will make you fertile and multiply your people. So he'll, whatever is wrong with in your body, he can make it right. If you stand on his word, you will see the manifestation of this word come, that will come to pass. Uh, verse 10 says, you will have such a surplus of crops that you would need to clear out the old grain to make room for the new harvest. So, you know, whatever old stuff you have, you will be able to clear that out. He's going to give you a new harvest. Okay? It might be a new job. It might be a new relationship. You know, um, it might be a new home. It might be a new car. You know, uh, he can give us new revelations on on his grace. So uh, he's going to do a new thing. He's going to give us a new harvest. So it's not by accident that you're watching this video today. Just get ready to see God's peace in your life. See all the goodness that he wants to give to you. All the health and all the prosperity that he wants to give to you. He's not a stingy God. Okay. He is a rich, a wealthy, wealthy God. Amen. He's created everything and everything is his. All right. Um, and verse 11, and it says, I will live among you and I will not despise you. I like that because, you know, under the old covenant, God would get angry with them because they were, they had laws that they could not fulfill. And um, they wanted these laws. They wanted to be able to perform for God instead of just receiving the blessings of God. They wanted to perform. They wanted to be able to say, God, look what I've done. I was able to keep that rule. I was able to keep that command. And they wanted this. But God, God did not really want to give them the law. The law was going to eventually come because the law would bring us to Christ. But it didn't have to come at this time. But they said, whatever you have for me to do, God, I can do it. And, you know, they were kind of both started boasting and all that. So um, God gave them the laws. And um, nobody can keep the law. Only Jesus was able to co complete and keep those perfect laws. Remember, the, per the laws that God gave was given by a perfect God. And only a perfect God can fulfill these laws. A lot of times today, a lot of our Christians think that they can keep these laws. Even Christians today sometimes, they, they think they can keep the Ten Commandments. But you have to understand, um, the Ten Commandments, you have to keep every one of them. And not only by action, you have to keep them by thought. You can't have any covetous thoughts, you know. You can't have any bad thoughts. You have to keep them perfectly in all ways. That's why no one could keep these laws. Because we are imperfect people. Because we still have sin in our flesh. Okay? And that sin in our flesh will rise. If you talk to me the wrong way or say something you shouldn't say to me, you can feel it. I can feel it rising. Right? But the Holy Spirit will help calm you down. But yes, we all, everyone has sin in the flesh. That's a part of us where sin still is there. But as far as our spirit, we have a perfect spirit that Jesus has given us. All right. And the only thing what's going to happen with the sin in the flesh, when we have a new body, when Jesus comes back to get us, which is called the rapture, he's going to come back and get us. He's going to give us a new body like he has. Okay, so we won't have to worry about sin in the flesh. So anyway, um, but a lot of times this old covenant is dependent on man. It's, it was dependent on you. 
And if you could do these, if you could do it, then yeah, you would get these blessings if you could do it. But a lot of times they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it anyway. Um, so they stayed cursed more than they stayed blessed. Because now if they if they gave the um did the animal sacrifices which would cover their sins temporarily, then they could get blessings. But a lot of times, sometimes they probably they got tired and they didn't do it. That's how they went into captivity uh with the Babylonians and other other people because they couldn't they stopped doing the sacrifices. They just got tired of doing it. So I'm just so glad today we don't have to do that. We don't have to go get animals and sacrifice them and get to do it every so often and do it this way and that way and do it by whatever um, the rules were at that time. All right. So let's go to, um, we're going to go into the new covenant. Let's go to Romans 5 and 1. Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So whew, this, this scripture is so relaxing. It relaxes me because now I don't have to try to do something to get peace with God. I don't have to try to feed everyone in this city to get peace with God. I don't have to do all this stuff. Yes, we do good things, absolutely. But sometimes some people feel, and some Christians, um, they do this, they do that, they're busy, 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 busy. And a lot of this business, business, God didn't even tell them to do. You know, they do it because they want to have peace with God, not knowing that they already have peace with God. The word says, stands for itself. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God now. You don't have peace with God because of the good things that you've done. You have peace with God because of Jesus Christ. So we need to relax on that and, and believe that. We don't have, I, I used to feel that I had to get on this ministry at the church and that ministry at the church because I wanted God to see that I served while I was here on earth and I did this and did that. And one time we had joined a church and I had gotten on the choir. And um, at that time I had a baby. My baby was only a few months old. And, and um, you know, people were saying, well, I'll hold you, baby, you know, if you're in the choir or whatever. And I got on the choir and... Um, then I stayed on it for a little while, and then in my spirit just didn't have a piece of being on the choir. And uh, so I, I, I got off the choir. I was embarrassed because, you know, I, I got off. Cause, and I told the directress I just didn't think I could do it at this time. And uh, that it just wasn't in my spirit to, to stay on there. And, and I felt really bad because I'm like this. When I try to get on an organization or get in a doing a ministry i like to give a hundred percent and uh i kind of felt like a failure you know because i i got off it, i just didn't have peace being on the choir so then um i found out about the missionary and i got a call from the president of the missionary there and and uh went to a meeting and whatever and i had a peace there and so um, and that's what I, I, I joined. But, um, you know, sometimes we jump into stuff too fast without praying about it, without, without asking God about it. We just do it, you know. And, um, and sometimes when we do things too fast, um, it doesn't turn out well. And that's why we need to pray about anything that we do, especially when you're making decisions, um, that's going to affect your, your, that affects your life. You know, we need to pray about it and uh, say, Lord, is this, is this the time? Because a lot of times things are, it might be something we want to do, but is it the time for us to do it? That's the thing. God has a timing. And when that time comes, he'll open that door and you can just walk in to whatever he has for you to do. But anyway, um, 
we have peace with God. That's good news. And our last scripture is coming from John 14 and 27. John, let's see. I hope you have your Bibles, guys, so that we can study the Word of God together. Okay, it reads, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So he said, I give you this peace I leave with you. Safety, soundness in mind, soundness in body. Okay, and you have to know that this is the will of God for you to have a sound mind. Because a lot of times, you know, they say there's not a cure for Alzheimer's and these memory loss diseases. But we need to stand on the word of God says, he says he'll give you soundness. He'll give you peace in your mind where you can remember. I don't care how old you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. God's word will prevail. It doesn't, it doesn't matter about age. A lot of times we go with what the natural say. Well, you know, when you get at this age and that age, you know, you lose memory. The Bible doesn't say that. Okay. He said he'll give you soundness in your body and in your mind. Give you that peace, that shalom peace, where you can remember, where you can remember what you done yesterday. You can remember what you ate yesterday. You can remember what you done five or ten minutes ago. So I speak and decree that, that you have a sound mind in Jesus' name. Amen. And he, and, and, um, so he said, I leave all this with you, health, prosperity, and this is what God wants you, us to have. He wants us to have good health. I'm going to do more teachings on health uh, really soon as, as, the, as the Spirit leads me. But God wants us to have good health. He doesn't want us to be on our back. I can't serve if I'm on my back. I can't help my family if I'm on my back. He wants you to be able to feed yourself. Give your own self a bath. He wants you to do that. Just like he told the man that was paralyzed, that, that, that had been in the bed for so many years. He said, take up your bed and walk. So he wants you to be able to do for yourself. And to be independent. Where you can feed yourself. That's a blessing. When you can get out the bed. And when you can... Um, Fix your food and feed yourself. That's a blessing. And that's something sometimes, guys, we take for granted. But we get up, get our clothes on, do what we need to do, go to work and all that. That's a blessing. Because there are people in the hospital just laying there. There are people in nursing homes don't even know which day it is or if it's day or night. So stand on this peace that he has given you. Stand on it and receive it. All you have to do is receive it. Just say, Lord, I receive your safety today. Keep my family safe today as we're out and about. And give us good health today. We want health that you like you have. You have good health. We have good health. And prosper us. Prosper our finances, God. And he'll do that. And if you're in debt, he can take debt and counsel your debt as well. I'm believing that. And I'm standing on that. And sometimes we'll say, well, you know, I've been waiting for so, for so many months. I've been waiting for so many years. Well, keep waiting. Keep waiting and see. Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. So just keep waiting, guys. And that's all that I wanted to talk about today is that true peace, that real peace that only God can give. You know, sometimes the world will say, you know, you can get peace by going on vacation and uh, taking yoga uh, or meditating on the universe and all that stuff that, that sometimes they do. Uh, you know, just think of something that's relaxing 
And I'm not saying anything. I mean, if if you can go to a spa and, and get massages or whatever, or whatever, okay, go ahead. But I'm talking about true peace. Peace that pass of all understanding. You know, I'm not talking about temporarily peace. I don't need a temporary peace. I need long lasting peace. And that's what he has given us. And he said, I've given it to you. And so just receive it on today in Jesus name. And if you're not saved, just say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Come into my life, come into my heart, and save me. And if you said that, now you have that true peace as well. And um, we welcome you to the kingdom. We welcome you to the family of God. And so, guys, up, I'm through for today. Um, just uh, remember to subscribe to this channel and uh, tell your family and friends about the beauty of grace. And... Um, and take care and I'll see you next time.